Hi and welcome to episode two of Ask Paul. Today's episode is going to focus purely around mortgage application forms and we're going to try and help you get a clean application into the bank and in turn get your first mortgage approval. There's a few things to look out for here folks but let's be honest and let's be common sense about the whole thing. The first part of the application is the simplest part. Name, date of birth, your occupation uh, and the kind of property you're looking for and the amount you're looking to borrow. What kind of trips people up is a nitty gritty that gets into behind the application. So the, the things that you need to accompany your application with. The first thing would probably be an employer's uh, certificate uh, certifying your salary, your years of service and that you're permanent. If you're self-employed, you're going to need three years of accounts uh, and maybe an auditor's report and a tax clearance certificate. If you're a PAYE worker, you're probably going to give your three months uh, wage slips as well to prove your income for the last three months. The next thing you're going to be asked for is a six months accounts for your current accounts or any other loans you have outstanding. For your current accounts, one thing to look out for here from the bank, they want to see you have the ability to repay the mortgage you're looking for. They're going to look for clean accounts. If you have six months, if you get the last six months, maybe you still have a month or two to make sure your bank accounts are really, really in good order. And what do I mean by that? If you have an overdraft, try not be in it every month. Uh, try not be broke by the time you get the payday. I know it's easier said than done, but try and have a couple of quid in your account by the time you get the payday so it doesn't look like you're on the breadline. Obviously, it's going to help your application form. And one thing to point out here is a big, big no-no with the banks. Any type of paddy power, betfair, any type of gambling on an account, even if it's just a couple of quid on a football match or a race like that, is a big no-no. They're automatically thrown out the door. So again, just make sure you keep your accounts clean from that point of view. The other thing that doesn't work in clients' favours is existing loans. Not that the banks dislike them. They like to be able to see that you can repay loans, but it really has an impact on what you can borrow. I'm going to give you an example. A client that has a 50,000 annual income can borrow roughly 195,000 euro. If that same client has a 500 euro repayment on a loan, so let's say a car loan or a credit card or a, uh, I don't know, a student loan, say, well, then he can now only borrow 184,000 euro. So that's 11,000 in the difference. So again, before you go for that mortgage application, try if possible to get rid of your loans. It will really, really help you. The other thing I suppose you want to talk to when you get to these things is using your debit cards. So when you get your statements in, your six-month statements, if it's just got loads of debit card stuff, it looks like you're spending every single day, it's not going to be a great sign. Try, try maybe at the beginning or the end of the week, take a couple hundred quid out and use that for your discretionary spend rather than using your debit card all over town. And that's a big, big hint. The next thing I suppose I'm going to say to you is Take your time. I know it's exciting when you're getting on the first time property ladder and you're really, really excited. But again, make sure you get your accounts in order, get the correct property and go to the correct bank lending institution. Our next episode is going to focus on whether to go to a mortgage broker or directly to the bank. And we're going to go through the pros and cons of both. So maybe come back into us next week and have a look at that. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube to our channel and also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And as always, any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me at info at askpaul.ie or alternatively drop a name in the comments box below with your question. And thanks for tuning in.